what is up everyone? This is definitely one of the most confusing videos I've ever recorded, so if you want to hear about me and my keyboard scenario and what I've been going through in terms of keyboards for the last couple of months, then stick around. It's going to be quite interesting if you've got the patience. But if you don't care and you're just after something really easy to watch, then I recommend you click off and you just wait for my next video that will be more interesting. Um, because this is going to get a little bit in-depth and also a little bit confusing. So if you're still around, hello everyone. This is what I thought was going to be a really innocent review of my new keyboard. Those of you with a keen eye have noticed that lately I have ditched my Apple USB keyboard for a new keyboard. More specifically, this is the Matthias Tactile Pro keyboard for Mac. It's a mechanical keyboard. It's extremely loud. It uses the legendary Alps switches, and it's one of the only mechanical keyboards out there specifically designed for Mac, and also specifically designed for Mac while trying to kind of look like an Apple product at the same time. There are a few mechanical keyboards out there that have command logos and stuff like that, but this one is truly sort of trying to be an Apple product. For those of you who care, here is the box, Tactile Pro. Now, where does the confusing part come in? Well, yesterday I was sat in my chair and I recorded a 13 minute stint of basically the first half of, like I say, what I thought was going to be an innocent review. So all of this is me chatting yesterday evening about my new keyboard and my keyboard scenario. But you may have noticed that today I have the K65 on my setup. So this is where the confusion comes in. What I'm going to do for you guys right now is I'm going to roll this clip, I'm going to roll this video, and you've got to sort of pretend that in yesterday when I was recording it, I was in the mindset that I was just going to make a review of my Tactile Pro. Now there are some things that are still relevant, there are, most of it is still relevant, some things that aren't, and I'm going to get to that after you guys watch this 13 minute stint. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what is almost a review of the Tactile Pro. What is up everyone? First of all, I am sweating, it is boiling in here. I do apologise, but I've got a lot to say. I want to make this video, so strap in, sit back, relax, enjoy what I've got to say. I wasn't even going to make this video, but I've got so much to say about this bonkers product. I just had to make it. So you're going to have to put up with me being absolutely roasting in this room with these lights and the crazy boiling weather and everything like that. So today we are going to talk about something that a couple of you guys have noticed in my last few videos, and that is, of course, my new keyboard. I am the somewhat proud owner of a Matthias Tactile Pro mechanical keyboard for Mac, a keyboard that a few of you have probably heard of, or lots of you have probably heard of, but not many of you have probably experienced it because of its crazy high price tag, kind of difficult availability, and it just doesn't appear that many people have these keyboards. So I'm hoping that this video is going to provide great insight to a product that definitely mystified me for quite a large chunk of time, and I'm very glad that I finally experienced it. And yes, I will say at the beginning of this video that it is my main keyboard now, and it will be for the foreseeable future pretty much. Um, but there are plenty of things that I dislike about this product and I'm going to share them in this video because I know there are a few reviews out there of this keyboard that are completely praising, completely glorifying, they make it sound like a, just a perfect device. So, first of all, a little bit of a history lesson coming up. I was using, for the longest time, I was using the Apple Aluminium USB keyboard. I got that for my birthday in 2009, and I used it all the way up until 2014, 2015, when I unfortunately spilt a little bit of water on it, and some of the keys stopped working. And I was kind of ready to move on from the chiclet keys anyway, because sometimes I was getting wrist strain. At that time, I was using the computer more and more, and that is very low keyboard. I kind of prefer my hands to be up. So I was getting a bit of strain and I was ready to move on anyway. So it, it was all for the best, but I kind of, yeah, obviously didn't need it to break for me to stop using it, but I am pretty gutted. Anyway, after that, I moved on to using this as a temporary full-time sort of keyboard. This is, of course, the previous Apple keyboard. This is the Apple USB keyboard from around 2003, 4, 5, 6, that sort of time period. And um, it's a very, very nicely designed keyboard. It looks gorgeous on the desk, especially when it's a little bit cleaner. But unfortunately, the typing experience, it's very, very mushy. It is not nice at all. Apart from 
apart from the space bar, the space bar is okay. So during my time with this keyboard, I was hunting and I quickly found what I hoped would be a really good replacement and that was the Tactile Pro. Now one thing was putting me off going out and buying it. Well, two things really, it's a combination of the two. Firstly, price. This keyboard is between 130 and 150 pounds. That is a lot of money. And you're talking to somebody that has probably never spent more than 10 quid on a keyboard in their life because I've just kind of fallen into keyboards and I've never really bought them. So 130, 150 pound, that's a lot of money for somebody like me to spend on a keyboard and a lot of money to spend on anything. So price came into it. Secondly, was the fact that even though the price was high, I couldn't get a large enough amount of information that I wanted about this keyboard. Yeah, there were reviews, but I could kind of tell that people were tripping over themselves because they were so pleased with the key switches. I couldn't get an overall feel of what the product was like from reading the reviews. I wanted a, a product overview, not just chatting about the, the typing experience. I wanted to know about the keyboard as a whole, and I just, I just couldn't find anything that made me satisfied enough to to go out and spend that money. So what I decided to do was contact Matthias directly. I think I contacted them in probably around February or March of 2016, that's ringing a bell. It was definitely before I moved. I sent them an email and I said, I've got this wonderful YouTube channel and I've got this perfect subscriber base for your product. Because I honestly believe, no BS intended, I believe that this product is ideal for you guys. You guys are Mac nerds, geeks, and just you know, well into this sort of stuff. I thought this would be an ideal product to showcase. So I asked them very kindly and politely, I crafted this beautiful email and I said, can you please send me a sample of this keyboard so that I can check it out on my channel and share with my viewers some of my experiences? And then also I'll know for myself what the keyboard is like. So I was waiting for the reply and I got the reply and I was extremely disappointed. Now, I'm not just throwing my rattle out of the pram or whatever because I'm annoyed that they didn't send me a keyboard for review. I am very, very accustomed to being rejected. 99 out of 100 times I send an email to a company, they reject me because obviously my channel is small and it's kind of low quality and it, companies just don't understand my channel, apart from certain companies and certain people, but they've really got to take time to actually learn what my community is about, learn what my channel is about, and companies just don't have time to do that. I've been very lucky in the past working with MSI and Initech and people like that, but for the most part, I don't get these opportunities. So before anyone mentions that, you know, you're just sour because Matthias didn't give you a keyboard, I'm not. I'm very accustomed to rejections. But the reply disappointed me because normally when I get a rejection from a company, I either don't hear back from them full stop or I get just a normal rejection that says, hi, sorry, we're not, you know, sending out samples at this time or anything like that. Just something generic is fine. But this reply that I got back delved deeply. It was a long email from Matthias and it delved deeply into why they don't support smaller channels on YouTube. So this wasn't an issue about me and my keyboard anymore. This was an issue about how I felt that their views on small YouTube channels and small reviewers in general were just completely, um, they just sounded completely misinformed and they didn't seem to have a clue what they were talking about. So I sent them a reply and I was, I, I basically reminded them that this platform has been crafted from many different people, from many different walks of life, doing many different things and, you know, try to give them an overview of what this wonderful thing that we now know as YouTube is called and how it, be how it became. And I was just really disappointed that they told me that they only work with people, that, reviewers that have uh, large publications and large websites or some crap. I can't remember what they even said. But they basically said, if you just run a YouTube channel, then you never ever get products from us. So yeah, that was that. So it looked as if I was not going to get a product from Matthias, which was fine because by this point I was kind of like, ah, sod it anyway. I was didn't, I wasn't in the mood. Fast forward, I decided to begin eBay searching. After a couple of months and I was sort of reflecting and looking at a few different keyboard options, I was like, I still want to try and get my hands on one of these Tactile Pro keyboards. They look pretty mint. So I was searching on eBay, searching on eBay, trying to find a keyboard, really, really hunting. And I finally managed to find one about two months ago. And I paid what I think is a decent price for it. It's not a common product at all. So if it jumps onto eBay, eBay and a few people happen to be looking for it, then it's going to reach 
reach pretty close to its brand new asking price. I got this for just under triple figures, I believe. I believe I paid like £92 for it or something. Um, I think that was including postage, so not a bad deal. The keyboard itself was barely used, apparently, according to the seller. As soon as he took it out of the box and started using it, his office mate, or was it his wife or something? I can't remember. He mentioned that whoever he worked in the office with started moaning about the noise of the keyboard because it is extremely loud, something we'll talk about later on in the video, by the way. So for under 100 quid, I've got my hands on one of these keyboards that I thought I'd never be able to get. I'm very pleased at this point. I didn't want to make a dedicated unboxing video about it you know it's just a keyboard I wanted to kind of experience this one on my own and then if I had points to share I was going to share them in a normal video was kind of like a side topic but then I got a lot of points to share so I decided to make this dedicated video so firstly I got it out of the box and the first thing I noticed was really really unfortunately for a 130 to 150 pound product the plastics don't match the color of the keys and the color of the keyboard itself the keyboard bed or frame or whatever the heck, they don't match. The surround of the keyboard is much whiter than the keys. In comparison to the surround, the keys look kind of yellowish under certain lights, which I'm going to try and capture on camera. It's so hard to capture different whites on camera, but take my word for it. The keys look kind of yellow in comparison to the keyboard, which is not nice, not nice at all. They're not sun yellowed. That's just the color. They're not yellow at all. They're normal white, but because the keyboard itself is so ice, ice white, a little too white, it's almost pink white. It's really weird. It just makes the keys look really dull and yellow. So that's the first thing I noticed about the keyboard, which didn't sort of come out in pictures. Uh, I was kind of really gutted about that because it just didn't look as sexy as I thought it was going to look. Whatever. That's totally fine. That's just a really nitpicky kind of point and something that you won't notice in, you know, most scenarios anyway. So whatever, that's fine. Second thing I noticed was the keys themselves. Now, when you see a keyboard, normally a row of keys is exactly that. It's a row of keys. So every key has its place and it's a straight line. If you get a flat object and you put them against the keys, all of the keys sit completely flush to that flat object. Straight lines. Keys sitting straight where they're meant to sit. It looks really nice. But the Tactile Pro no. The keys sit wherever the heck they want. They sit wherever they've last been left. And when I got it out of the box, because it had been shipped and shaken around, the keys had wiggled and bibbled and wobbled all over the place. I'm going to put this thing down. And the keys were just everywhere. They just looked like teeth that needed to be, you know, needed to have braces or whatever. This keyboard looked as if it needed to have braces. So I was like, oh my word, is it damaged or what? And I was looking at it and I couldn't figure it out. And no, that's just the way it is. The keyboard, when you wiggle a key, it can move really, really far. And not just that, it will stay in the last position that you've put it. So if you've wiggled it quite far up or you've typed and it's kind of sticked up a little bit from the rest of the keys, it'll stay like that. And that's how your keyboard will look. So it'll sit on the desk and all the keys are just going to be wherever the heck they want to be. I was not expecting that at all. I do have another mechanical keyboard. I've got a Corsair K65. And check it out. Let's get the ruler out again. These keys, they sit flat against the ruler all the keys are flat exactly where they're meant to be in their own space so I knew it I'm not you know a mechanical keyboard expert but I knew that when I took that tactile pro out of the box I knew that it wasn't just a mechanical keyboard thing where all the keys decide to go higgledy piggledy wherever they want so at this point I'm thinking okay I am very glad that I didn't spend 130 150 pound on this product because if I got this out of the box brand new and it looked like that I would be very disappointed because even though I understand that mechanical keyboards are very expensive to produce and they're expensive devices they're premium quality devices I would hope that if I was spending that amount of money on a product that everything would be perfect about it or as close to as perfect as possible. So simple things like matching plastic colors and making your keys sit uniform in a straight line together so that it doesn't look completely ridiculous. I was just expecting that to be a normal thing, but apparently not. Anyway, moving on to the third thing. I plugged it in, ready to go and booted up my computer, typed in my password, bang, enter. Incorrect password. I'm like, ah, oh, strange. Type again, enter incorrect password. So I look a little bit harder at my password screen and I'm like, that password looks really long. So I'm there typing all of the letters of my password and I get to S and I press S. Next thing you know, 
S, 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 along the screen. Every single time I press S, this keyboard would either do two S's, three S's, four S's, or the most annoying one, S, then put the next letter that you've typed, then a double S, which was a really weird little trait that happened every now and again, but the S key was going pretty much bonkers. So I plugged my other keyboard back in, logged in, searched it on Google, and apparently it's a normal common problem for some keyboards, some mechanical keyboards, you've just got to keep hitting that key until it stops doing it. I don't really know why, it's got a name, I can't remember what it is, but it was really annoying. So I plugged my keyboard in and I just kept pressing S. I opened text edit and I was pressing S, S, S all the time. Then I was jabbing some other letters, S, S, S. And then eventually it started doing it less and less and less. And now about one and a half to two months later, it does it about once every computer use, maybe twice every computer use, a normal sort of hour, two hour stint on the computer. It'll do it once or twice, which is still really annoying, but something that I can cope with. So with all of that out of the way, you have been fully 100% introduced to my Tactile Pro experience. Leaving all of that behind, let's talk about the keyboard, how I'm finding it today, and just let's try and review it without any of that stuff clouding my judgment. I'm gonna give you an honest review of what this keyboard is like. And that's where things were gonna start going all cinematic and I was gonna chat about the keyboard, blah, blah, blah. That's not happening anymore and I'm gonna show you guys why. So in that clip, I spoke about that problem I was having with the S key. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug in the keyboard and I'm gonna demonstrate the problem to you because unfortunately, while making this video, despite the fact that it's been fine for ages, while making this video, the problem has indeed returned. So as you guys can see, no funny business is going on here. This is a keyboard. This is the Tactile Pro. This is the USB cable. I am plugging this straight into my system. No ifs, no buts. The keyboard is going to refuse to work because the K65 is plugged in. Okay, I'm going to have to unplug this for a second, which is going to be a pain in the ass. Is it also going to be a pain because it's on USB 3.0? Okay, this keyboard is not gonna work on USB 3.0. I've had to unplug the K65. I'm gonna to have to plug it in USB 2 behind the screen. Here it is, powered up. And something cool that I'll show you guys is just like any Apple keyboard, it does have a light under the caps lock key when you press caps lock. I think that's really nice. That's a nice white light. Anyway, let me show you guys the problem. So my K65 is completely unplugged. There's no funny business going on here. I'm gonna put my finger on the S key and I want you guys to take a little look at text edit. You'll be able to hear when I press the key and you'll be able to see in the window when the S's come up. Okay, and again. <laughs> hey. Just so you guys can see, I believe under the bezel no, it didn't do two under the bezel. Let me do that so the bezel isn't in the way. <laughs> do a little few more S's. So as you guys can see, every so often we get two S's or three S's or whatever. It's not that bad at the moment, but it does fluctuate between sort of this bad and really bad and not happening at all. Now, just so that you guys can see that I haven't got hold down a letter, if I hold down S, you guys can see that it gives me the options for the different S's. So if I hold down any key on my Mac, well, J hasn't got it, but if I hold down A, for instance, you can see the different A's. So when two S's appear, it's not as if I'm holding down the key for too long. I'm simply, there you go, it did it right there. I'm simply jabbing the key just once and it's done two S's right there. So again, jab and two S's there. So 
That's the problem. I know this demonstration isn't that professional, but you guys can get an idea of the problem. Now, let me chat about this. I could easily get in touch with Matthias, um, technical support, and hopefully send the keyboard away for repair. It's only one key. It's obviously a very small problem. I've tried everything myself. I've searched and searched online. I've tried everything, but this is part of the bigger picture. I've been using the K65 quite a lot with PCs over on the workbench over there, and this, with its Cherry MX red key switches, is a very, very nice typing experience. Now the Alp switches, they are stunning switches, but, It's not just the switches that are louder, the whole plasticky construction of the keyboard and the way that the keys are just so loose on the keyboard means that it creates not just a clicky racket, this is a nice little click, it just creates... I'm not sure if you can hear that, but when you press a key, the whole keyboard sort of creaks and rattles. Listen to the casing of this thing. This thing is plastic. And it's, just listen to this creak. That's just me squeezing the keyboard. If I squeeze this K65, nothing happens. It is solid. And when you press a key, the only thing that moves on that keyboard is the key. This keyboard, The whole thing moves and it's just a complete like shake show on the table. It's creaking, it's making a load of racket and you can feel it under your fingers. You can feel that the, that the keys are moving. The switches are stunning but the keys are not in my opinion. You can feel them shifting about. This one, the keys stay in one place. It is super, super hard to explain. For the longest time, I was putting off getting a normal keyboard and putting it on my Mac setup. I have been using Macs for the best part. It's 2017, so coming up this October, probably 10 years. I think I got my MacBook in October of 2007. 10 years I've been using Macs. And since then, I've gone through phases of being really Apple this and Apple that and I've had a lot of Apple accessories, but if you look at my desk setter, I'm running a Hackintosh, I've got Dell monitors, I've got a Logitech mouse, I've got a Corsair keyboard, I've got a Mackie mixer. There is nothing Apple on this setup at all. Apple don't, well, actually, I've got this optical drive, but apart from that optical drive, Apple do not make a single thing that I am using on my desk. And I know the Matthias keyboard is not made by Apple, but it's like, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's a wannabe Apple product. It's kind of filling that gap that Apple have, you know, Apple have rubbish keyboards. It's filling that gap. It's saying, look, Mac users want mechanical as well. Here is the Tactile Pro, and I respect that. I think it's really cool. I love the way that it uses this sort of see-through plastic, and it kind of hints towards the design of not this keyboard. It doesn't hint towards the design of this one, but it hints towards the design of these keyboards. I don't have a white one. I've only got the graphite one to show you guys, but as you can see, it's kind of very similar. You've got the see-through accents on the bottom, you've got the USB ports on the side, and I, I respect that. I really love that. I am a big fan of the, the design of these keyboards. And don't get me wrong, seeing as I'm not doing a review, I'm going to mention some glorious things about this keyboard. I already mentioned the caps lock light. I think that is gorgeous. The USB hub is brilliant. It connects with one USB 2.0 to the machine, and you get a USB port on the back, a USB port on that side, and a USB port on that side. But check this angle out, guys. You can see here better than ever what I'm talking about with the non-matching -match plastic. You can see that the keys are much, much uh, darker white or creamier white 
than the body of the keyboard. I don't like that, I really don't. It makes the keys look dirty, even though they are a little bit dirty. I haven't cleaned this keyboard since I've had it, but that's, that's not the point. The keys are a different colour, that's one thing I don't like. But carrying on with things that I do like, these little uh, stands on the bottom, the little flip out feet, they look really nice and they provide just the right amount of height on the keyboard. Very, very nice. One thing that I don't like is the keyboard is tall at the front, very, very tall, and it doesn't provide a wrist rest. There is no wrist rest with this keyboard. Not sure if there's an optional one available. This is me at a normal talking volume with the Apple USB keyboard flexing the product not so much as to damage it, but just to flex it to see how much it can flex. Take a little listen to this. Now there's a little bit of like a bumping noise because the casing is kind of loose on this one. But this is how much flex noise I'm getting. Here's the tactile probe. 150 pound product. Same amount of pressure. If I up the pressure, I think I could snap this thing in half. This is the keyboard that the Tactile Pro is pretty much designed from. In terms of design, it's uh, the switches are based on the Apple Extended keyboard, but this is the keyboard. This is the Flex. Same kind of design. USB ports on the side, this flippy up plastic thing, which in theory should make more noise than the other one. I'll flip that down, see how much flex noise we get. And back to the tactile probe. And when you type on the desk, despite the really, really loud key switches, you can just hear the thing flex and bend under the weight of its own sort of under the weight of the steam of its own switches. Not happy. So I bet you guys at this point are getting my drift. There are two things at play here. Firstly, my particular keyboard is faulty. I can't let that cloud my judgment of the keyboard as a whole, but obviously I can let it cloud the judgment of the keyboard that I'm gonna use. In that clip, the S thing had become a much smaller problem, so I didn't think it was an issue. I thought it had gone away, but today it's back, which is massively coincidental, and I'm very glad because it means that I didn't have to make another video and I didn't waste time doing that, that video that was gonna take a lot of time. The other thing at play is ignoring the issue that I have with this keyboard. I don't really like it as much as I should. If this was 40 quid, even though it would be impossible for it to be 40 quid with the Alp switches, if it was 40 quid, 60 quid, yes, lovely. But for the price that it is, man, I'm just looking at it now, compared to this K65, I can see it here, my eyes can see it, the keys aren't straight, check this out. Just look at the keys from here, and I'm going to try and describe what's going on. There's kind of like a bow in the middle here, so as you can see all of these keys are kind of facing downwards. These keys here are taller than these keys. I just really hope you guys can see that on camera. These keys, and sorry about my sniffly nose in the background, these keys are all straight, they're all uniform. These ones, just look at that. Can you see it? Look at that. Oh man. So what's the plan? What am I gonna do? Well, I'm really enjoying the K65 on my main setup. So for now, that's the keyboard that's gonna stay on my setup. But I also really like the K65 for my floating keyboard around the room to test systems and stuff. I like it because it's mechanical, so it feels nice and it's small. So what I'm gonna do is this. Here's the plan, it could change, but this is my plan for now. I've got a Tactile Pro, it's worth a lot of money and I've got a feeling that I can get more for it than I paid on eBay because the brand new Tactile Pros seem to be drying up. I don't know if Matthias are planning on releasing a new version and they're slowing down or whatever, but if this is fully functional, then I reckon I can get more than I paid on eBay, and I can sell it on eBay and get the money back, and then I can buy a uh, Corsair keyboard very similar to this one, but with a number pad. I can get the red switches, because I like the MX red switches. I don't really have experience with any other switches, but I like these ones. 
I can get it with a numpad because ideally I do like to use the numpad on this setup. I'm an Excel user, it's very handy. But of course, my Tactile Pro isn't fully functioning, so what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to box this guy up, contact Matthias, get them to hopefully repair it if I can. Then when I get it back fully working, I can flog it on eBay, bang, happy days. So that's it, the Matthias Tactile Pro. A product that I thought was gonna be absolutely flipping amazing. I'm so glad I didn't buy it brand new, even though I probably wouldn't have these issues. What would have probably happened is I would have spent all that money, bought it brand new, wouldn't have had the is issue with the S key, and then I would have been un unhappy with the keyboard. I would have liked it, because I like it now. I don't really hate it or anything like that. But I would have just been not quite as pleased with it as I would have thought, and I would have dumped all of that money, and I would have been really excited, and it would have kind of sucked a little bit like it does now. So that is my video about the Matthias Tactile Pro Keyboard. Definitely not the type of video that you guys are accustomed to seeing on the channel. If any of you guys use this keyboard, then let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings about it. I know I'm probably in the minority. The reviews for this thing are top notch. For me, it's a tiny bit too loud, a tiny bit too rickety, a tiny bit too ugly, and I'm gonna use the U word. I do honestly think it is a little bit ugly. And yeah, I'm gonna get myself a nice Corsair keyboard. I know where I stand. So thank you so much for watching. I'll try and keep you guys updated in future videos about how the repair is going with Matthias and things like that. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Maybe it'll be something a little bit more positive.